Morning. Yeah, the breaker is stripped that's on the bin to blew away. The whole panel box is gone, so we got to run a wire to that bin. Should have thought of that sooner, I guess. But so the thought, you know the electrical box is on that bin. Oh yeah, that yeah. The fans. Sure. Now that's unhooked. So there's no power coming. So it's so no the breaker's tripped because it's missing. Yeah. The bin that we're currently going into, the fans wouldn't turn on yesterday. We figured it probably had something to do with that bin that's missing. It does. Morning. 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 Oh yeah, it's balmy out there, isn't it? Yeah. I got the, uh, I'm head to toe long johns. Yeah. I don't mess around when it gets this cold. I figured. I'd rather be too warm. Morning, Morning 23. Oh, oh, it's going. Good beer. Yeah, a little chilly out this morning, huh? Yeah, I suppose you can fit that in the hopper. Where's your buddy? Anna! I see her sitting over there. She'll probably hear me start it. Yep. She heard me. Are you coming with? The wet bin was full last night, so I ran it all night. I'm guessing it's going to be empty in an hour, which means they aren't going to keep up because we switch fields. We move north a ways. There's a bunch of end rows to take off. So I've got a little bit of downtime here because I want to get to the bottom of that bin, make sure the sump is wide open. So I'm gonna go check the job that the Ripper's doing with Jim. I think it's doing a pretty good job. It's not getting it super black and we're far enough north that we still like to see fields super black sometimes, but I don't mind a little bit more residue on top to protect the soil a little bit more over the winter. I was not expecting these guys to be here with any equipment today. Come on out. I know it's warm in there. Anna. Come on, Ditch, out. Ditch. Oh, it'll be good to get a little bit more done around the pad there, because hopefully we got building materials here within the next week. And this bin has got to be getting close to empty. Probably another half hour maybe an hour. I just want to get in there or look in the top and make sure that that center sump is wide open. Because it seems like it's moving slower than it should and yesterday it was so windy we were getting a lot of material like this in the trucks just blowing across the field and into the truck so I'm hoping they're not plugging the sump. I think I got to adjust something up there. You guys can't see that because it's, it's a bit humid right here. So I push those vaporizers in a little bit more to make it easier to build heat in that top plenum. It's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit out right now, so it's a lot harder, obviously, for this thing to keep heat in it than what it's been. It's a little noisy up there, but standing in that warm, humid air feels pretty nice this morning. So I can see on the screen here that it's adjusting. Although it's getting colder, that's not what I expected. I might have to monitor that, maybe. I did something in, no, now it's getting hotter again. We're just gonna dump this out in the pit and let it sit so I can get that empty. It's so cold and struggling with gas pressure, I can't get it, I can't get both plenums to stay hot enough on the dryer. So it's moving a little slow. We're in a new field now. It's probably gonna be our wettest one. I mean, I'll take that. It's a little wetter than we've had, but pretty good. So even after moving that vaporizer in, I'm struggling to get enough heat in it. It's so cold out this morning, it's icing up the lines and it can't push enough gas through to keep it hot. Seems like we've run out of grain in the middle of this bin, which is what I wanted. So I'm gonna climb up top here and shine a flashlight down and hope that that sump is wide open now. If it was just leaves sometimes, when it gets the grain off the top, the leaves will float up and feed through. Uh, she's still covered. Start it back up, run it a little more. I've been asked about 3,000 times why we don't put cameras inside the grain bins so we don't have to climb up there and look. The amount of dust in those grain bins, you would not believe. If you climb down the ladder on any of those right now, the dust is piled up this thick on a round ladder run. The cameras would be covered within the first couple truckloads. You'd never keep the dust off of them. Oof. Well, I'm waiting for two things. 
I'm still trying to get gas pressure to get enough temperature out of it, but there's enough temperature that it is working. It's drying the corn, it's just not working correctly. The other one is I gotta get down to that sump yet, and I had to empty the pits in the truck, and anyway, I'm still waiting for that. I won't go into too much detail. But I also noticed the conveyor could use some grease. Actually, there's nothing to notice there. It just, it runs like 24 seven this time of year, so it wouldn't hurt to grease it. I know you are all wondering, what type of grease does Zach use on his conveyor bearings? It's the Mystic JT6. This specifically is a full synthetic high temp grease. Probably overkill for those bearings, but that's what we have cases of because we kind of just run that and everything. It's been a good grease for us. We've actually been running Mystic's JT8. Uh, they got a 1540 blend that we've been running in all our big diesel motors. The trucks, the tractors, you name it. That includes the T800s here. We just been getting the stuff in bulk. We get it in 55 gallon drums. They got all kinds of things. We run it in the snowmobiles, the side-by-sides. We even got a real handy, like a squeeze tube for the grease on the fifth wheel plates. We got uh, poly slider, poly plates on a couple of our trucks, but the one that we grease, we actually use the Mystic grease on that as well. So check out the Mystic line if you guys need oils and greases, that sort of thing. They do a good job. You can check out the link right underneath for more information on Mystic stuff. And for now, I got one other issue. So the tarp on this truck will not open. It's not making connection. I can't get this light to stay lit up. I've been wiggling this and wiggling this and in and out, off and on. You get the light to turn on for a second and then it goes out. And I fought it enough that I know I'm not gonna get it going. So I think I gotta pull the bolt out of that bearing, bolt out of the bearing, out of that motor so that I can crank it manually. But meanwhile, the pits are full and Alan's gonna be coming back with a truck and I don't have a third truck to give him so I gotta get the pits empty. But I don't want to do that because then it's going to fill the dryer and I want the dryer to call for corn out of the wet bin because I need to get down to the dump on that. Our pet's heads are falling off. You see, right there, I don't know if you can tell, but that pit is full. Thankfully, the combine's moving. The operation hasn't stopped. But I'm kind of running around like my head's cut off back here trying to figure everything out. And I still can't get the dryer. Well, now it's climbing a little. It's just, it's variable. It's not right, but it's supposed to be 5, 10 degrees warmer today than it is now. So I really hope it just comes around. Gonna need a punch. Oh, we got a third truck back, but now we can't tarp it and we're going five miles down a highway, so I don't, uh, I don't like that. We'll try not to use that truck if we can help it at all today. How many people just yelled at me through their devices trying to tell me that they can just tarp it manually? Duh, Zach. A few hours later. It's been a very long, cold, frustrating day. And it's not getting any better yet, so I'm just gonna have to see you guys tomorrow. So yesterday just kinda went to poop on us. We just had a lot of little annoying problems. It was, it was a struggle. We were on that bus. And I just made the decision to put the camera down. It wasn't going to make great content, and I was frustrated. And um, Well, here we are today. And it's sunny, and it might be really cold out. We actually made the decision to leave the stuff parked in the shed overnight and, and give it a couple hours to warm up a little bit here because it is, I think, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. I have to include that because we got a global audience. But about 15 degrees Fahrenheit out here, which, which I know is not extremely cold. But for harvest weather, at least for what we've had so far this year, and with the temps looking like tomorrow, they really start to warm up and it gets a lot nicer out again. We just decided, instead of fighting with the cold, we we're gonna we're gonna hold off for a couple hours till it gets nice and balmy up into the mid 20s. Morning. Were you able to get one of those dividers? No, they've got one in Elba Lake, but I got bolts and a tap, so we can put this one back on and run this one until we get the one from Elba Lake. Okay. Put it on, yeah. Can't believe how good of a day this is gonna be. First off, there is a couple hours of corn left in the wet bin to run through the dryer. Anna, do you want to start that up? Well, I don't have thumbs. That's a good point. I'll do it. <laughs> ah, never mind. Remember all those little uh, problems we were having yesterday? This one was just an automatic trip out, so Dad's gonna start that because, well, to be totally honest, it's because we're in a hurry right now and we want to get out into the field. Dad wants me to fix this while he restarts the dryer. Where did he put my parts? There we go. 
So what we got here is there is a divider shield between each row and what that does is stop the residue that's being chopped up from all being thrown to one side until it piles up in one row and takes the gearbox out. These are bolted in and there's a metal spacer or a bushing inside this rubber that tightens the bolt on it so that this rubber can stop that. We had a bolt fall out on one end and the rubber spun, the knives chewed it up a little bit but it kind of basically just spun out of the way. But these threads are boogered up, shall we say. And so that's what this magic, uh oh. That's what this is for. I'm just gonna give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, taparoo. I'm probably gonna forget that there. It goes in, that's good, all good things. Up and down and around. Fixed and ready. Big combine and a little door. Fat guy in a little coat. Dad said the windows were bad. I didn't believe him in the shop. There, that helped. Yesterday I was so cold, and it's supposed to be, well, it is colder today. Yeah, so I went. From work, can you see? Are you out of my way, or is it clear behind me? You are all clear. I'm out of your way. I went head to toe long johns. Now I'm way too warm. Down. It still amazes me that they can build a folding corn head. That is a lot of moving pieces out there. A lot of stuff that needs to line up just right. And a lot of weight. It's impressive. Well done, engineers. Engage the separator! Sometimes I get asked what all the smoke is that rolls out of the feeder house in front of me when I start it up every morning. It's not smoke, it's just the dust actually that settles inside the machine. You turn it on, and that big fan blowing just stirs up the dust. I've had several people ask, and unfortunately the more we get into corn this year, the more we find out that our yields are just disappointing. We've got a lot of really short corn that just dried up. It, flat out ran out of moisture and we thought when we got to our north fields where we're at right now this is our farthest north stuff we thought we would get some better yielding stuff it's kind of the same as everything else it's just half of it just got way too dry and it burned up and the yield is not there so it's disappointing we are going to end up I think right below average yields uh, I was hopeful that we were going to end up just above but uh, it is what it is, you know, at least it's not all laid on the ground like last year. And the weather's great, so we've been able to get out here and get it. So far, it's been a fast harvest. Aside from yesterday, it's been pretty easy. So, there's the update it's on no that. There's the first full truck of the day right there. A little bit ironic that all the corn is kind of burned up and ran out of moisture, yet all of our tiles are wiped out from too heavy of a rain. Yeah, that is kind of funny, isn't it? Sadly. Those two big storms we had in the spring. Is that working as all part of this dish now, or what are you thinking here? Yeah, I think this will be the spot where I can go straight across, so then I think I'll, I'll probably go to those east sides there, start working the south side. As I was saying, those two rains in the spring really washed a lot of spots. Even out here, we have massive basins that are designed to take, they say, 30-year rains. The heaviest rain you're going to have in 30 years, those basins are built to handle. And there's, there are spots where it came up over those basins and went around them and just wiped out the tile risers. So we've had to replace some of the uprights and the flags and stuff. But it was just, it was a mess this spring. We got the Mendeco Storm out here doing some work. Uh, he's going around filling in some of these washouts where the rainwater came down the hill and made some uneven spots. This is a 250 acre piece with a lot of big hills and a lot of basins. So before Jim gets out here with the ripper to run the heavy tillage over it, we're just gonna level off those spots real nice. Maybe have Jim even lift up over some of those because the harder you can keep those areas, keeps 
some residue on top like the storm is going to do it keeps that stuff in place a little bit better in case we get some more storms next spring i'm full i'm full i can tell by all the corn coming off the roof am i full Judging by the mudslide, I'd seen a corn come off the top, yeah. Seems like uh, I'm probably less full than I was a minute ago. <laughs> High probability of that. This is a long field. It's literally one mile from one end to the other. It's broke up in a few spots, but this round is the first long round that literally goes almost an entire mile. And I knew we were going to be real close at some point. I figured we'd have to stop and dump, but the downhill, the downhill, I did it. It's my fault. I guess he found some weeds to break up down there. Last week that works the well. A Greens Council will hear last fall and you know, there's uh, fall fertilizer being applied and some anhydrous started going on at the end of the week. And, yeah, so Jim made it out here. He's catching up on tillage. Honestly, he's uh, a little too fast on tillage this year. He's probably gonna be right on our heels and he's not gonna let me do any. Hello. Um, we've got some wheel studs that are, a couple that are missing and three that fell out that were sitting in the wheel on the combine. Yeah. The threads are all fine. Nothing's actually, uh, nothing's messed up, but we're gonna need three, well, Two or three bolts for sure, and then I've got the other ones here. We're going to need some spacers and a good impact. And maybe a chainsaw, because the, the uh, driveway up here, there's a little cotton went down to the field. Well, we ran into a little tree on the end rows there. It's not our tree, but we'll chop it up. It's been there for several months. We'll chop it up, push it over, get it off the field. But 2.0 had a good eye here and saw a couple wheel studs. Three of them were rolling around in the wheel. There's five missing. Three of them were in the wheel, uh, and a couple more were not tight. So, Dad sent an impact with Alan. When he gets back with the next truck, we'll tighten everything up there, and Dad's gonna head to Midwest Machinery and get us a few more bolts and spacers. I have a hard time sitting still, but I guess if something dumb would happen, we'd be sitting still for a lot longer. Yeah, I uh, seen on TikTok the other day a guy had a couple of bolts missing like you've got and uh, kept going with it and his entire rim shattered. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, there's not a single broken one. And the ones that are loose, they spin by hand, so they just weren't tight enough, I think. They didn't get torqued. No, they didn't. They didn't break. There's our tool delivery guy. It's amazing how that impact is set to the perfect torque every time. Yeah, absolutely. The local dealer did not have any bolts on hand, so Dad's gonna go rob some from the other combine and uh I can't stand here anymore, so we we did get an impact and we snugged up everything. We're just short on four bolts. Either, I'm gonna guess it's a seven eighths bolt probably. Get and we don't we don't have spacers, so I think I'm gonna guess inch and a half long. They're just a regular bolt. They're a grade eight, but I don't know. They, I think they're I think they're standard. So I'm just gonna see if we have any in the bolt bin, or Dad's gonna check see if we have any bolt in the. I'm alongside the driveway right now, right at the crest of their hill there, but I'll be I'll be coming up by their gate in just uh, less than a minute. Those look right. I don't think the thread pinch is right. They're different. Bought them up with that one. Yeah, they're different. Yep. The ones for the sprayer are metric. They're different thread. So those don't work? No. Do you have any other ones? I got regular bolts. Well, if they're regular bolts, we'll try these ones. Oh, I did? Yeah. Well, that was finger tight. <laughs> I should have looked at the picture. Do we have, we probably want a big washer. 
Oh, they are. If they're too long, they just go through. Yeah. But we probably. Okay. We need washers if we can. Do those washers fit on there? They would, the yeah, the ones from the sprayer, I'm pretty sure. wonder why they have that spacer out there. I don't know what that spacer's for, if it's a for different wheels or what. Is that enough bolts? Yeah, we got enough bolts. We got okay. five bolts, we got five open holes. We're all fixed up, going again. I got the impact with me, so I'll check those bolts every so often. It's only a couple hours of uh, of the night left. And then when we get home tonight, I'll, I guess I'll road this home, we'll put it in the shop, and then we'll put the big impact on it in the morning just to make sure everything's tight, because they're actually supposed to be torqued to 450 foot-pounds. And I'm pretty sure that DeWalt impact is not quite getting there. I didn't even get stuck clearing up that stupid tree. I'm living large today. It's too dusty for the camera to really pick that up. But it looks good to me. Oh yeah, jalapeno. You know what, I think it's time for uh, this video's lip sync, uh, where I'm not actually gonna be lip syncing, I'm gonna turn the radio on and mouth the words or sing the words, but it looks like lip syncing to you guys because of copyright laws, so. All right, today's is, is gonna be a throwback. I hope you're ready for this. This is random rural radio station stuff. All right, I hope you guys can guess what that is down in the comments because there's gotta be some value to it. Otherwise, I'm really just annoying my wife by making her watch me sing. I must be getting bored because I'm starting to dig things out of the bottom of my lunchbox that have been in there all harvest. I eat mostly only prepackaged crap because I hate making food. And my lunchbox, I mean, I lose it throughout the day. So I, like, I don't put any ice in it. I can't have, I mean, I can't, I do eat sandwiches that have been in there way too long probably too much information sorry well for the night anyway this is the last 12 rows we got about 40 45 acres left in this field but it's in two small pieces and we're not going to open them up tonight we're going to do that in the daylight it's kind of weird you turn the lights off and then when you shut the machine off the lights turn back on for a couple minutes how do they look like they're still there. Still there? Most of them. That's a good thing. None of them are sticking out like they're all loose? No, they look good. Oh, that's good. Back of the bus. Back of the bus. How much is in the wet bin now? Four and a half freaks down, right in the middle. It's just picked up because we just dumped a couple of trucks. Okay. So we haven't really gained on it all afternoon. Well, the powwow is over. So was the work day for the most part. Dad washed the dryer all day, which was a nice break for me. It was kind of nice to sit in the heated cab and take it easy most of the day. Now I'm gonna wash the dryer for a few hours. And sounds like it's pretty close to caught up actually, so I probably won't have to let it run all night. Oh, hey, cat dog. Haven't seen you all day. I, I should have taken you in the cab with me, huh? No, definitely not. Nope, you're not a cab cat. Nighty night. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and uh, follow the link down below to order some apparel, merchandise, whatever. We got all kinds of cool stuff. Oh, nighty night.